Hey there, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here, as always, is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. As a result of our conversations and our time together, I, I sincerely hope that you receive the positive vibes and the good energy here on Above Life Channel. With this particular afterlife conversation, you should know that we're going to be talking to David Bowie, someone who we have spoken to before. So if you're here just for pure channeling entertainment and want to hear about afterlife celebrity stuff, this one, maybe not so much for you. This is a bit of a deeper conversation, specifically about a spiritual intuitive topic, a psychic topic, working with ancestry. What does ancestral work mean? It's a very hot topic when it comes to spirituality, spiritual development, and I think we should call in someone who I know is very good at speaking about these types of things from the afterlife perspective and with a human lensing on it, which would be David Bowie. Now, David Bowie does have a playlist because we've spoken to him before. To me, he is like my go-to for conversations about like cosmic understandings, astral energy, galactic energy, star energy. And so the topics for me of ancestral work and star energy are very mm, connected. Let's say that, all right? And so we're gonna have a bit of a conversation, not just around ancestral work, but we also will talk about the topic of star energy or star seed just a bit, probably in this conversation. And, and I have to share that with you right out front here, because if you're not interested in ancestral, understanding this ancestral work stuff that people are talking about and buzzwording about and stuff, or if uh, star energy stuff is like, what the heck is that? And you're not at all interested, then this might not be the best video for you, but there's tons of other videos here on Above Life channel that you can enjoy. All right, so let's get down to it and bring David Bowie in. Okay, so he brings me, okay, so I'm a little swirly instantly. I literally feel my body going like this <laughs> because of his energy. But I came outside to do this. Partly because it's beautiful and partly because I need to be grounded. When I talk to David Bowie, he's very star cosmic kind of vibes. And I literally feel like from my sacral chakra, like the hips pelvis area, I literally feel like I need to like do a Sufi circle like for yoga like that. I literally feel kind of swirled a little bit. <laughs> it's a star energy that does that. And it feels kind of fizzy star energy when you work with star guides, whether you're talking about like specific star cultures or star origins like Arcturus or Palladian energy. Those are the two probably most common, well-known ones, I guess. Um, it, to me, it feels like fuzzy energy, like, like bubbly, um, glittery, kind of, uh, kind of like um, bubbles. <laughs> That's how I describe it. Like bubbles fizzy, like in a, in a good way. Hey, if you know what movie I just referenced, in a good way, put it in the comments below. <laughs> See, gets me like feeling good and happy. It's perfect, lightening the energy vibration. Oh, even the birds like it. Did you hear that? Lightening the vibration. All right, so that's David Bowie for you. That's Mr. David Bowie, Mr. Cosmic Consciousness, Mr. Star Energy. And you just thought that was like an act in his human life, right? Okay, so... Hi. <laughs> Hi. He said, we are <laughs> like all of us, everybody. Woohoo. Yeah. Um, I literally feel like we're floating on a little inner tube now, kind of like a floaty in a pool. All right. <laughs> we're in a squishy floaty kind of inner tube, just chilling, chilling in a very calm pool of water. Okay. Lots of light blue throat chakra is activated, third eye is activated, so clairvoyance, you guys. Yes, use your imagination. If you can open your imagination, that part of your mind, for this particular channeling video, you're gonna receive in ways that you didn't think were possible, you know? Let's not, don't take this psychic stuff so seriously, you guys. It's not like gloom and doom and serious, serious, serious business. It's supposed to be hopeful, healthy, <laughs> and helpful, okay? Hopeful, healthy, and helpful. Oh, I see a new tagline, David. Is this a new tagline? You know, he's so funny. He kind of literally sits on like this kind of throny, kind of bouncy kind of. <laughs> 
on you like looks like very uh, queen like i'm gonna say looks like a queen not a king a queen because he's very so david boy is very androgynous looking even in human life but in afterlife he's very much i love that because it's a sweet sweet unity in unity of energy of masculine and feminine and i super duper respect that which star energy if you look up any kind of star energy stuff that's what it is maybe we should define the star energy let's he says oh it's so he says to define star energy as you use these this term he says it is it is a bit um, he says a uh, culture. It's like a cultural reference is what it is. Oh my goodness. And now my eye is really tearing up too. Wow. Okay. Ooh, water element. Hello, water. Oh, literally my eye. Mm -hmm. It's not itchy. It's just like all of a sudden tearing. Wow. Clearing, clearing the passageways, huh? He says it's like a cultural reference, star energy. So... From the human mind's perspective, there is very different and specific ways in which to perceive the star messages, the star information. He says the star channeling can be a gateway or portal in, in which to bring through energetic information and then response responses come from that. He says responsiveness comes from that. So which would be responsiveness would be an action and or feeling emotion that then creates action the ultimate expression which is exhaustive he said it's exhausting to think of but the ultimate expression for humans for you he says is action it's always action it's never we can never be be pleasured by the idea and in an incredible depth of appreciation for the energy and the, and he says the energy is the point of it that's the whole the whole point of the contact, he says, so. All right, I feel like I have to sit up very straight because this is like he has his legs crossed, his hands on his lap, and he's just on his knees, and he's just. So yes, I see him in body form. He will take on a body form, especially when I'm speaking to you so that I can see the, the um, and readily make the human translation, and so you can understand and feel his energy from his former human life experience, so you can relate to him as your mind can identify it as David Bowie. And yet, the star energy is a very cosmic, ambiguous, non formed energy state. I can't even, how can you say state when it's non formed? But it's a struggle for the um, accurate articulation of the information, okay? So. Throat chakra is activated. My heart's activated. I can't even really quite get to my solar plexus, which is the belly, you know, because there's this huge wisdom kind of from almost like a rectangle from above the head, the crown chakra here all the way down and right through the belly or the solar plexus. So third eye is activated and active, which is right here in the center of the forehead. For those who don't know, the throat chakra and the heart here. Okay, I, as Bridget, I want to explain to you like my perception of how I understand star energy so that people, so that you, people who are finding this video aren't jumping into the ET or alien thing, thing, because for lack of better terms, that's kind of things that are tied up and caught up in energies that are not hopeful, helpful, and healthy, hopeful, help, helpful, and healthy for all of us. So I don't want to use um, those terms. And that's not what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about star energy, I'm talking about spirit guides. Okay. I'm talking about spirit guidance and I'm connecting into ancestor lines, lineage, like literally ancestry.com type of a thing where you do that in your human form. Well, that's, we're going to talk about that in um, this conversation with, with David Bowie from the afterlife, we're going to talk about the, the ancestry.com, but with star energy, because that's how in part, that's part of my lineage lines. That's part of my ley lines and as well as many other lifetimes. So I know, um, I haven't shared this with you here. I don't think I share on fairy grasshopper. I do talk about my psychic experiences there, my personal path and different experiences I've had. And I talk about intuitive topics and give perspective for people who are opening up intuitively or having massive spiritual awakening or who are just interested in learning about 
energy and such. Um, I share my stories and, and things there. I'm Fairy Grasshopper YouTube, but I don't know if I've shared it here, but I have um, part of my lineage, part of what I consider my ancestral lines as a soul, as a spirit, believing in full on reincarnation and being in body before and being in different types of bodies, different kinds of bodies, different planets or planes of experiences and incarnations as well. So I have, have, I definitely have star lineage and star line energy. And, um, and I also have um, many other lifetimes, what we, you would consider maybe this term is so limiting, but past lives, I have that too. Um, the one I'm working with right now a lot is my Celtic roots. Um, the energy of that for me, I have a very deep, bonded connection with my Celtic um, lifetime and experiences. And that is what originally when I opened up to my spiritual gifts, that was one of the first spirit guides that I met was Margaret, who was a um, an aspect from that lifetime of my experiences there and beautiful long red hair and this gorgeous, this gorgeous Irish accent and walked for many a nights um, outdoors in the freezing cold in my Minnesota winters and, and spoke with her and talked with her and, and, and just had such a kinship and sisterhood with her connected to that from that lifetime that I spent there. So, and I'm sure it probably had many. And so I'm working with that right now a lot. Um, it's coming up again for me in beautiful supportive ways. So with David, though, with our conversation here, the ancestral energy of the star is so obvious, which is why I wanted to have this conversation kind of unique. It might seem like a little bit of a polarity or a duality to talk about ancestor, ancestral lines, because you might think very real about like your human family and about your different incarnations and past lives as a human person versus star seed energy or people who have this this feeling of not belonging here on this planet and having dreams of you know swimming in what looks like oceans of light and energy and talking with people and connecting not in a human way but in a, a knowing way a sensing way in the heart or a knowing in like a telepathy in the mind but there's no mind or heart separation it's just kind of like a glow of energy or where you're an orb of energy, or where you're like a water person, or all these things, right? Atlantis, Lemuria, um, energy of different planets or planes like Arcturus, Cirrus, um, Palladian. I have to say that because I have so many clients that are Palladians, and I love you guys. You're empaths. You're so sweet and such amazing people. I'm so glad your sweet, sweet, starry energy, light pink. I see them as light pink. Sorry, energy is here on Earth because we need we need you, and uh, I have part of that as well. So just like when you're a human and you have ancestry, where you're a mix, like you're you know two percent Irish, um, your ancestors come from Ireland, or maybe you're like twenty percent from um, um, some other European states, and maybe you know, 30% from just other continents and, you know, maybe Southeast Asia and I mean, all that stuff, like how you kind of have a mixture of these different lines of lineage coming in to create your full body of ancestral energy. Same as with your spirit, with that, with all the different star lines and lineages and energies and the human lifetimes and lineages and energies and such. So, and there's not just past, I'm not just talking about the past lifetimes. That's kind of what we're looking at here when we're talking about this, but present and then future lifetimes as well. So there's actually the past lifetimes and the future lifetimes are kind of two parts of this big whole. We're not going to get into the future lifetimes in this particular conversation. I don't think we are, but that's a piece of this. So what can you share with us then, David Bowie from The Afterlife, about this ancestral part, this ancestor thing? Like, why is it such a big hot topic for people now? And, and what can we know just as regular old people with just brains clunking around in bodies, like what can we know about that, the ancestral piece? Why is it so important? He's showing me the sun energy, solar sun energy. Oh, he's saying that it's warming up on the planet, like energy is getting hotter 
um, not physically hotter. He's using this as a metaphor or analogy, like the hot sun and how your body gets really warm because of that. It's like collectively there's this rising up or bubbling up, raising the, oh, it's interesting. He's saying, because the discomfort, the discomfort level of the human experience is becoming such that it's becoming so that it is getting to an edge where it will become, it will kind of spill over like a cup that's just kind of, kind of running over a little bit. Or like a bucket being filled with water and then it kind of just gently, it's not a rush. He's not trying to be like shoo, shoo, lots of like, okay, you guys are done. Your tipping point. Now here everybody's on the new earth or here everybody's doing this. No. Um, literally showing me like just a small, like just a faucet, like a hose, just sit in a bucket of water where it just starts to overflow and it just overflows and it's not loud and it's just gentle and it's not a big deal, but it becomes kind of mushy around the land around it becomes kind of mushy, right? So he says the comfort level, it, it has become tighter and tighter. It's like compacting, like compressing. And so the spirit must rise above or transcend the human um, experience or expression of suffering, he says, which is quite popular, isn't it? It is popular. He says, he says, myself included, I would, I would say that I felt that too as a person. The suffering level is quite popular, he says. <laughs> and, but, but as the numbers of people get to the point where they're rising, it's interesting because he doesn't say above, but I feel like you're coming up above, but he doesn't say that. He says beyond, you're rising beyond that. So it's like you're expanding beyond just the bucket, the container, the body, the human experience that you're feeling, you're expanding beyond that. And like the energy of your spirit is like the water and it's just overflowing. So, and he says, it's not to be contained. It was never meant to, he says, be contained at all. It was meant to live both in and outside of the body. And because of the complications with the, um, the sensitivity of the empathic energy, um, he doesn't say empathic, but I say it, um, of the energy around your physical body, that was some, your spirit was supposed to be able to be out here very comfortably. And like you guys, how we would consider our space bubble or our energy bubble around us kind of a thing. He said, your spirit's supposed to be able to be in this space too and inside because it's not supposed to be just tucked in. He's like, it's not supposed to be like a little gem that you just tuck in your solar plexus and plug it in. Like, hello, it's a light bulb. He says, he says, it's so cliche. You know, he says, it's so not, that is so never, <laughs> that was never intended to be. He says, but he says, but I don't shame anyone. I don't judge anyone for, um, he says, there is no, no uh, prejudice about the way in which we as human beings choose to utilize our spiritual energy. It's quite understandable that in order to protect it or feel protected and not um, so incredibly sensitive, it, you would be keen to put it aside or tuck it into a place where it could be protected. He says, much like your valuables, like in a human human uh, frame of reference, he says, human frame, human frame, he shows me my head, he says, human frame, like mind frame, mindset, um, like you'd hide your valuables, right? If you're out at the park, and you're going for a walk, and you're like, mm, you know, if I just leave my cell phone right here, where everybody can see it, and be tempting for somebody to smash the window and grab it, and so I'm just going to tuck it underneath, or I'm going to take it with me, it's like that, okay? So he says it was never intended to be something that would be hidden, or uh, made small. He says it was never intended. It simply came from necessity. He says it simply comes out of, it's born out of a necessity. He says it's an adaptation that has happened over time. He says, myself included. He says, but suffering creates this feeling of distance from yourself, which is your spirit, which is why people don't feel as though they know themselves. And so this has created this, this, this movement of a desire to know yourself and you know yourself by looking back at the experience you've had. This is David Bowie saying experiences that you've had in that your life, not, but it's not just good enough. He says, it's not good enough anymore just to look at this lifetime, this one lifetime, because you know, you go to therapy and you have all these talks and conversations and relationships. And he says, you get a little, um, that just doesn't, that's just not enough 
for you and the human mind because the human mind has has come to claim more need for more instant gratification instant information instant knowledge instant knowing it has to be very specific and everything is very literal it must be interpreted in that way and because there's not enough time because there's another thing he said so he's like next 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 and he's trying me flick 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 like images like on Instagram and Facebook and just like in your face. He says, so you have adapted. He says, quite well. Like this is not a bad thing. This is a needed. This was needed in order for you not to lose your mind. Your mind had to catch up and speed up, which means it has not the time for the creative processing or the downtime, which you would call it. We call it the lay time, the L-A-Y, the lay time, he says. In the afterlife, it would be more accurate to say the lay time, which is the time you have while you're at literally, he says, lying down, which Bridget, and he says, you say, I say nonlinear time. We use nonlinear time to process any changes, which is while we're sleeping at best, because then our minds are free and our bodies are relaxed and there's not this constant awareness of the body and the mind and the body and the mind. We're just at rest. And so the lay time, that's what I call L-A-Y, lay time, that's what he says. And uh, that's interesting because I call it non-layer time, so the lay time. But he says that serves an incredible purpose for reconnection. And he says, so the ancestral energy is the beyond this lifetime. He says, it's not this lifetime. It's, not, it's no longer good enough for you. It's no longer acceptable. You want more information, more knowledge, more access to wisdom. So it would make sense that your spiritual learning would be geared toward this understanding and, and looking to experts or looking to people who have declared themselves as expert in this topic area to be able to give you the variety and diversity of information to be able to process through the mind's channel, the mind's channel, what is really spiritual and a craving from your spirit to be connected more fully and completely in a whole view of who you are, which is not through labels and identities and, and visual captures of imagery, but it is rather through more the essence of who you are, which is this, this incredibly diverse tapestry of, of energy is the best way I can articulate what this is, energy. So he says, it makes sense. That's, it's your natural process for learning. This, this makes sense. And he says, this is a good thing. This is perceived as a good thing. If the mind needs a good or bad, which it clearly most certainly does, it's a good thing. It's a good sign, so to speak. Hmm. Okay, so one of the things that I feel is like, but then doesn't that mean we're looking for more answers? That's just the frustrating part for me, you guys, as a intuitive coach and as a psychic and a medium because I'm all of these things. And it's it's hard for me because I feel like I get frustrated with the whole industry of spiritual development and psychic work and intuition, teaching people how to work with their intuition. I get frustrated with the whole industry around that's built around it because it almost is like, um, it's teaching us as people that we need to look outside ourselves for answers. We have to search for ourselves because we're not connected to our soul. Clearly our soul must be lost. Our soul is not lost. We are always connected, I assure you. If you were not connected or tethered or corded to your spirit, you would be dead, you would not be here. So your spirit is here, even whether you feel he or she or it or not, it's here. I assure you, it's here. You just don't know because probably you're so used to the energy of your spirit being around you, maybe around you in this space somewhere or inside you that you can't feel the difference because it's always been there, you know? And if you feel a little distanced, it might be because you're going through a time of personal development where you're processing um, some, maybe you've had a life defining moment, a tragedy or experienced some trauma and or having memories of those things, which is just as potent to you and disruptive in the normal day-to-day -day human life um, as, as actually experiencing it itself at, at the time, because oftentimes we hold it back and we tuck it away anyway, but, but it can bring the, the spirit of you then will kind of step back a little bit to create some more room to expand your space. Like remember the bucket? and the water kind of flowing over to give you more room to spread out your energy so it doesn't like 
feel so targeted and you ha don't have to make it mean something about yourself because if you make it mean something, if you process it by meaning something about yourself, like a judgment usually is what it would be or a belief that is not fully accurate, especially if the experience that you've had in involves another person, which most likely it will because that's where we get our information through relationship, interaction, connection. That's the point of relationships is to have these experiences. So it's like 50% yours. It's not all yours and so by making something an experience or an un something mean understanding become full on your responsibility duty or ownership it doesn't that doesn't work because it's not true it's not accurate that's why we have duality that's why we have polarity we have opposite stuff we have um light and shadow work we have um we we have all sorts of dynamic energy that cannot be quantified into a one particular belief about yourself and it would be and it would be quick and it would be something about you designed to prevent any kind of future trauma which actually would prevent you from any kind of future happiness either related to whatever the belief was so there's a lot here or in regards to the soul work and so it, and it frustrates me it, it doesn't, well, frustration isn't the right word. It, 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 it's hard for me to, this whole seeking outside of ourselves, it, it's, it's tough. But I know because it's not the truth, really. It's ha part of it. It's one half of it, not even, but a half, a part, a fourth. Let's say a fourth. Yeah, fourth, that's good. I'm good with a fourth. We can use a fourth. Because it's the mind's need to try to make sense of something that's not sense, you can't make sense of a sense that's intangible. <laughs> like a sensing you can't make sense of psychic stuff you can't you can't you can come to an understanding about it you can come to a dynamic knowing about it and you can integrate it but you can't have a very specific defined meaning about it this means x y and z it doesn't work like that it doesn't work like that and i've been psychic for gosh how many years has it been now 2004 that i've been a woke woke psychic and a woke psychic person because psychic isn't what I do it's who I am it's part of who I am it's like I'm a mom I'm a psychic it's the same it's like that's who I am and I I can tell you it's very dynamic it's not just there's no clear definition there's no clear accepted understanding of what that means for everybody I mean it's just so the seeking outside of ourselves and the feeling like disconnected from your spirit, you're not disconnected from your spirit. You're not, you're not abandoned. There's, you're, it's just being quieted. It's being quieted. So you can recognize that your mind is doing all the talking and your soul doesn't, can't get a word in edgewise. So, and both are equally important. Your mind and your spirit, equally important voices. All right. Okay. It says, hmm. This is quite the convo. <laughs> He's like, this is quite the conversation, Bridget. Yes, it is. It is. So what would you like to say to us about how we can actually practically use this stuff about ancestry as far as spiritual ancestry and us as a soul incarnated and evolution of us as spirit? It's interesting. He's like decline. He says decline. He says, decline, decline the invitations that are not for you. There are varied offers, opportunities, is that better? There are varied opportunities and accept the yes that is right for you. So there's many different um, ways that people are talking about on YouTube and in books and other, you know, psychic resources and spirituality, self-development resources are talking about ancestry and understanding that, that go with the yes that is, that you're drawn to, that feels that you're like magnetically, like, like sparkly drawn to, not everything, because not everything, you don't have to learn about every single different ancestral kind of thing, like shamanism and um, paganism and like druidism and um, star seeds and 
I mean, uh, there's so many, I can't even, there's, there's, there's more um, priestessing and um, there's just, there's so much, you guys, there's so much. And so it'd be easy to get overwhelmed or caught off track or dig deeply into something that doesn't really fit you. He's that doesn't suit you. He's like the, 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 whatever it is that sparkles, that's, that lights up for you. Like to me, he shows me like glitter, like whatever your, the magic is. Like if something lights up for you and it's like a, you see somebody talking about shamanism or somebody talking about a star, like a, like the, um, the Palladians, for example. And you're like, Ooh, Oh, that sounds so fascinating to me. Follow that because the curiosity is kind of showing me like the curiosity and intuition are working together to bring you the sweet, sweet relationship connection with your mind that you need intellectually to that culture or, or tribe or experience or time that you've had before. And it just gives you a little, ooh, a little warm hug. It's like hearing from a family member you love when you connect at like the every year, five year reunions, but you haven't heard from them. You don't usually hear from them that much, but when you hear from them, you're like, yay, like that. So not everything will fit you and it's not supposed to because it shouldn't. So it's okay to not like stuff and even be almost repelled by it and and then go towards something else, you know? Like if learning about Atlantis is your thing or Lemuria or you're really big into crystals and you're curious about like... Um, just there's, there's uh, the Mayans or... Uh, the galactic energies and whatever that means to you because it means so many different things let's just be clear it means a lot of different things especially right now Woo, let's not even touch that one okay um so okay so that's good all right so go with what feels good all right you guys because there's too much info there's too much info so what else Oh, ooh, can I ask you about angels archangels because I feel archangel energy kind of starry energy but also kind of um, modern, uh, a nice like a little bridge between um, religion or Christianity specifically and spirituality. So do you, can we, he says, Bridget, that is an entire video. <laughs> it is. That's an entire video. So he looks very gold now. David, why, what is with the gold? He said transcendent energy. It is a higher vibrational energy and to honor the sun and the solar plexus, the spirit and intuition. He says, I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay, thank you for that. Thank you and nod for that. Thank you. All right, you guys. So I hope this video, I, I'm sure it's very informative. It's quite long com considering what we usually do. And, and I hope you've learned a lot about it, about these topics, a little bit of star, star energy, ancestral information, and then also ancestor energy and information. I'm kind of understanding this because there's a lot in the field right now. There's a lot of information about both of these topics, I think. And this is a good place to start with Mr. David Bowie from The Afterlife. And this is the purpose of Above Life Channel to connect, to inspire our spirits, right? And to give us hope here and to encourage you to live your life. It's your life after all. It's your job to live it and just live it. Thank you, David, for being here. I appreciate it very much. And thank you if you watched to the end of the video. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to reading the comments below. If you're looking for more videos like this, go ahead and check out the playlist with David Bowie if you want to hear him talk directly more, because I know I've talked a lot based upon the infused knowledge and connection that he and I have together. It's really easy for me to talk to him and get downloads of information. So I hope you can do that too. Go ahead and check out the playlist for David Bowie on Above Life channel as well. Thanks for watching.